ככה? Okay. Uh, I'm standing here on a viewing platform next to a sculpture in a park by an archaeological site in the place that was the center of the old city of Jaffa looking at the new city of Tel Aviv. And today this city is called Tel Aviv Jaffa and the story is Jaffa is ancient and Tel Aviv is new. And that's a little bit confusing. If it's one city, how can Tel Aviv be new? If it's part of Jaffa, which is ancient, and what happened to the old city of Jaffa, which used to be right where we stand? So let's start at the beginning, and the beginning really is those rocks uh, out there in the sea, sandstone rocks in the sea which make a rare natural harbor along the sandy coast of this country. Uh, and that's the reason really that the city grew here. Uh, already thousands of years ago, boats were stopping and trading here, and Jaffa has been uh, a port for 5,000 years, a city for more than 4,000 years. It's been settled by Canaanite, ancient Egyptians, Philistines, Syrians, Phoenicians, Greeks, Judeans, Romans, the Byzantine Empire, Umayyads, Fatimids, Crusaders, Mamelukes, Ottomans. For the last over 1,000 years, it's been primarily an Arabic-speaking city. And in 1909, when they say Tel Aviv was founded, it had been part of the Ottoman Empire for some 400 years. And this hill that we're standing on is a tell. That is a natural hill made higher by thousands of years of human construction, destruction, reconstruction. And that tell is the same tell as in Tel Aviv. The tell refers to ancient ruins and Aviv to spring and renewal. Tel Aviv originally was a translation of uh, Theodor Herzl's novel Alt Neuland, Old New Land or Ancient New Land, which is a utopian novel about the future Jewish state. And that was the inspiration for those uh, European Jewish immigrants who founded Tel Aviv in 1909, coming here to start in this ancient place something from nothing. And we have a famous photo of those people standing in their dark European clothes in the sand, over there, so just behind the red roofs where you see the towers, that's where Tel Aviv was founded. But if you took that same photo at a slightly different angle, you would see those red roofs. In the Vet Sedek, a Jewish neighborhood of Jaffa founded 20 years earlier, you would see uh, beyond the Vet Sedek, the Jaffa train station, one of the first train stations in the Middle East, which had been running for almost 20 years in 1909. You'd see along the coast, a bustling and fast growing, mostly Muslim neighborhood of Manchia. You'd see here, uh, on this hill, the dense center of the old city of Jaffa, the Kasba, and you'd see beyond that in the sea the great steamships bringing in uh, pilgrims, tourists, immigrants, shipping out from here uh, oranges which were exported all over the world from the great orchard, the orange orchards which went on four miles inland to the east of Jaffa. So in 1909 Jaffa was a fast-growing port. The Zionists were just another group and Tel Aviv was just another neighborhood but that started to change very quickly following World War I. In the First World War, the British conquered the Ottoman Empire, cut it up into new, somewhat arbitrary pieces, and in this piece, Palestine put their weight behind the Zionist movement, encouraging an influx of Jewish immigration and helping to build up Tel Aviv. So at the end of World War I, there was less than 4,000 people in Tel Aviv. In 1925, there was 35,000. And by 1936, 120,000 people. Tel Aviv had outgrown Jaffa, had become the biggest city in this country. And in 1934, the British actually made it officially a separate city. And as Tel Aviv was growing, really realizing this uh, vision of Herzl's to build here a European-like city, uh, here in Jaffa, in Jerusalem, all over this country, uh, people were becoming more and more concerned about the Zionist movement, about the plans to make here a Jewish state, about what that would mean to the non-Jewish population of this country. There was some attack, some violence against the new immigrants already in 1921, again in 1929, and in 1936 there we already had an organized political movement and we had what the British called the Arab Revolt in Palestine, what Palestinians call the first Palestinian uprising. The Palestinian National Movement basically is a coalition of 
all those other people in this country who are not Jewish, who in 1936 were still the vast majority of the population here, calling a national strike, shutting down the ports, saying no more Jewish immigration. And the British tried to crush that revolt with huge military force, and they came in here to the old city, and they blew up uh, 237 houses to make ways uh, for their armored vehicles to come through here. The fighting went on for some three years, uh, from 36 to 39, and in those years, pretty much all the Palestinian leadership was killed, imprisoned, or exiled, and the Palestinian militias destroyed. So Palestinians had very little organization at the end of World War II, uh, or soon after the end of World War II, when the British decided to leave this country, and the war began. The British began leaving at the end of 1947 and the fighting began all over this country and here between Jaffa and Tel Aviv. There was shooting both ways, bombing both ways, but very soon it turned out the Zionists uh, were just much better armed and organized than Palestinians were. Uh, Palestinian civilians of Jaffa began to flee. There were 80,000 Palestinians in Jaffa uh, before the war and more than half of them were gone by April 25th when one of the militias started a huge bombardment of Jaffa, of this hill, they say over 20 tons of explosive in three days. Meanwhile, the Manshia neighborhood conquered and depopulated along the coast. And just after that, another Zionist militia conquering uh, the countryside, uh, the Palestinian villages and depopulating them, leaving Jaffa absolutely isolated with an exit only to the sea, cut off from roads, from water, from electricity. There was 20,000, only 20,000 of 80,000 Palestinians left here at the end of the bombardment in the beginning of May. And those people fled desperately in boats uh, to Beirut and to Gaza. So there was less than 4,000 Palestinians left here on May 13th, when Jaffa officially surrendered. Those people were pushed uh, south of here into the Ajami neighborhood, which was fenced off and put under martial law. On May 13, 1948, Jaffa officially surrendered. And the next day, May 14th, in Tel Aviv, in the very same place, uh, where Tel Aviv had been founded 39 years earlier, the State of Israel was officially declared. The State of Israel first held Jaffa under martial law, but soon officially annexed it to the city of Tel Aviv. The neighborhood of Manshir along the coast was bulldozed away almost entirely. They left us uh, the Hassan Bek Mosque at the north end of the neighborhood, sort of lonely looking among parking lots and office buildings. And in the Charles Clore Park, which is actually the piled ruins of Manshir, uh, they left one house, which they made a museum to the militia which conquered Manshir. Here, the old city of Jaffa, they've left us um, the uh, southern and western edges of the old city, which they've renovated as uh, galleries and studios. But the center of the city, more than two-thirds of it, where we're standing here, was bulldozed away to make a road, a plaza, and this park that we're standing on. They bulldozed away the city. They left us here on display some archaeology, an Egyptian fort and a Canaanite temple, both over 3,000 years old, which means they bulldozed away the city and left the Tel, uh, the ancient ruins. And on top of the ruins, they put uh, this uh, platform, and in this platform, a sculpture, the Gate of Faith. And we can perhaps try to understand this sculpture as a sort of explanation for what was done here. It's showing biblical scenes. One column is uh, the binding of Isaac, another is uh, Jacob's dream of the ladder, both instances from the book of Genesis of God promising this land to the Hebrews, and above it the sort of bridge connecting the two columns, the conquest of Jericho, which is the Hebrews, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, coming back here hundreds of years later to conquer, destroy, and kill. Uh, so perhaps what we're being told here is, yes, this land is ours, promised us by God and perhaps by the vision of Theodor Herzl and the Zionist movement. But to claim that promise, uh, to make it really ours, we had to come here, destroy the cities uh, and kill the people. Uh, in some sense, uh, Jaffa had to be destroyed, had to be made a tell, a pile of ruins, uh, for Tel Aviv to truly be Aviv, to truly be this uh, a new thing built from nothing in the sand. <laughs>